This is Robert Picardo, and you're watching The Planetary Post. Welcome to The Planetary Post. First off, <coughs> big news. Just last week, NASA announced an awesome discovery. Seven Earth-sized planets are orbiting a red dwarf star a mere 40 light years away. Three of those planets are in the right distance from the star that they might just harbor liquid water. If we're looking for alien life, this is a great place to start. Back on Earth, the Academy Award-winning movie La La Land featured one of my favorite space-themed places in Los Angeles, the Griffith Observatory. I headed up there for a star party, and wouldn't you know it, I bumped into my old friend and fellow Star Trek Voyager cast member, Tim Russ, Tuvok, the noble and annoyingly logical Vulcan. Tim is also a very talented amateur astronomer. Take a look. Hi, I'm here at the Griffith Observatory and it's a star party night. So the Planetary Society along with other astronomical groups are all here looking up at the skies. I think the telescope is this way. Well, um, this is a star party. Yeah. And they happen once a month here, they do, right? Yes. And it's so cool because there are people from all over who, who gather here that night and, and bring their own scopes, or they get to look through this scope at a certain time. Right? That's right. Yeah, there are telescopes from several different groups, including the Planetary Society, bring up their telescopes, and the public gets to take a look. Mm -hmm. The Griffith Observatory was like a major co-star in an Academy Award-nominated movie, yes. La La Land. It's a great romantic location. Oh, we have proposals and first dates. The view is so beautiful. You've got this gorgeous view of the city. You can see all the way to the ocean. And so there's a lot of romance here. Can I have a look through the historic Zeiss oh, telescope? absolutely. In fact, a friend of yours is looking through it right now. You're kidding. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, it's unbelievable. It's, it's Tim Russ, my buddy from Star Trek. I mean, I, I heard that he was an incredibly passionate amateur astronomer, but it's amazing. Hey, Tim. Yes. Uh, Good to see you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I was just in the... Tim, <laughs> Tim it's me. It's, it's Bob Picardo. Bob Picardo, Star Trek Voyager. Oh, oh, you were... 157 are, hours of television. You, you were actually on I that was, show as... No, I mean, I was on all the time. All the time. Oh, yeah, you were? A, yeah. I had no idea. Here is a picture of the Star Trek Voyager cast, right. and, and that's you. Uh -huh. And then, does this person look familiar? Oh, yes, yes. The, the bald guy that was in there. No, I recognize right. I was the, the, the holographic doctor, the computer-generated doctor. It was right. a very, it was a very popular. Uh, did you carry this around everywhere you go? Is that like Would you like me to sign it for you? Like, no, I don't want to sign it. Oh, yeah, let's right. let's talk about other things. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. You are a passionate amateur astronomer. Uh, yes. Yes. And I know you're looking through the Zeiss now, but do you have your own scopes? Uh, yes, I have a what is called a five-inch Maxudov Cassegrain. Yes. Oh, cool. Could, could we go look through that? Totally. I'll follow you. Yeah. All right, since you don't remember who I am. When Griffith, Mr. Griffith, looked through the telescope at Mount Wilson Observatory before right. he built this, right. he said if, if all of mankind could look through this telescope, it would change the world. I have to agree with him 100%. It is definitely an experience. All the secrets to me, uh, in my opinion, are out there, and, and they're out there to be, to be discovered. That great big white thing up there, Bob, is the moon. All right, there you go. This is your scope. That's one of them, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, it's so beautiful. It looks a little bit like my complexion when I was 15. <laughs> um, do you have any idea where the restroom is? Oh, it's this way? Hey, Tim, yeah. you remember that scene in La La Land where this is completely empty? And the two of them dance around here, how beautiful and romantic that is. Yeah. Would you, would you, uh... Would no. You... Welcome to the most photographed, most beloved, most visited stargazing place in the world, the Griffith Observatory. I'm Leonard Nimoy, and I love this place. Tim, I think it's appropriate that we're standing here in the Leonard Nimoy Event Horizon Theater. I agree. I just like to ask you how you became interested in astronomy. I initially started uh, uh, practicing the hobby of astronomy when I was in my early 20s. So it's just a coincidence that, you know, eight, nine, ten years after that, you were cast on a Star Trek television series. Absolutely. And you were 
exploring the stars in Make Believe. Yes. Could have just as easily been cast on Baywatch, but it turned out to be Star Trek. <laughs> and you would have been studying bikinis. <laughs> what a great gift, for example, to give to a, a young girl or boy, to give them their first telescope if you're a parent and you want to get your kids interested in looking at the night skies. The reaction is, uh, it's physical. People see the moon and the planets for the first time and they cannot believe it. That's what draws people like Tim and hundreds of other people to the star parties here at the Griffith Observatory so that they can look at the night skies and then share their enthusiasm with other people who love doing the same thing. That's it. Tim, would you really, um, would you really sign this for me? Because, Bob, be a nice keepsake. I would be more than happy. And okay. I'll personalize it. All right, cool. Uh, I got a, I got a pen here. spell your first name? Bob. B-O-B. -B. There you go. There you go. Okay. How about that, huh? Thanks. Frame I appreciate that. it. Could be worth a few bucks. Uh, yeah. can, can I have my Sure, pen? absolutely. Thanks. If you're not in the Los Angeles area, I encourage you to find your nearest public observatory, space center, or star party event and look up at the night skies. Lastly, an asteroid or comet headed for Earth is the only large-scale natural disaster that we can prevent. Working together to fund our Shoemaker Near-Earth Object Grants, we can help save the world. Last month, we announced a $50,000 goal to fund grants for astronomers, and we have exceeded our goal. Thank you. If you haven't donated yet, there's still time. Additional gifts will raise our Shoemaker NEO grant program to new heights. Well, that's it for today. See you next time on the Planetary Post.